Are you happy with your Bob Ross easel? Or does it do this? This is my $290 Weeble Wobble. I'm hardly putting any pressure on this. You can see that I'm not, it's just crazy. Don't take any painting tips from me. I'm a carpenter. When it comes to this Bob Ross Weeble Wobble, I've got a couple quick fixes for you that I know you can do. Quick fixes to make this Bob Ross easel worth the money that you paid for it. So you can see as it purchased out of the box and set up, this 41 pound easel has a tendency to want to walk across the floor. Three reasonably quick steps that take less than two minutes. First, I want to show you where the problems are so you know what to expect when you get it. It's fairly weak, fairly thin walled. You will not get this tight enough to take the gaps out that happen in between the top piece has a telescoping leg that will insert into the bottom. This joint between the two is will remain loose unless you screw it together. I used a self-drilling tech screw flat head. And these bottom legs, these little legs rattle. I've already got shims and drove up into there to take that problem out. Shim it or tape it to keep it from rattling. The adjustments for the top frame, tighten these as tight as possible. I picked up some wing nuts, so I don't, every time I need to adjust this a little bit, I don't have to go out and get my wrenches. And I also bought a carriage bolt that fits in here, so it's a square end, so I don't have to have two wrenches. Once you get the easel set up, you're gonna have to add some additional weight to the bottom of it. It's just, the 41 pounds just isn't enough. I mean, these are light foot taps. I'm five foot 11 and the height that I needed required it to be one notch, which extends the leg 10 inches. A reasonably cheap design, pin, push pin, pull for your adjustments. The higher up that you bring, the further you extend the legs, bringing the easel up higher, the looser and the more wobbly this unit will get. So one of the first things that you're gonna have to do is find some weight to hold this to hold this easel find some weight to hold this easel in place to where it's not bouncing on top of you i found that an additional 80 pounds worth of weight on the bottom of this rack was extremely useful the additional weight alleviates the problem of it walking around on the floor back and forth and side to side has to do with this frame don't run away yet this is simple easily bought off the shelf i picked up the hog nose vice grips at freight harbor they were on sale for three or four dollars a piece i find it's important to make sure that you get the ones that have a little bit of a swivel right here it'll make it flush up nice all of this hides behind the easel and is hardly even noticeable once it's installed this is one inch tube steel 16 inch thick wall you can buy this at Lowe's, Home Depot, and I think Freight Harbor might even carry some of that. When you're putting these on, you want to make your first initial adjustment to where it gets just tight 
and then you want to turn that clockwise two more turns and then clamp them down this piece you're still going to see a little bit of air in here because there's a brace and a bracket back here but that just took care of the back and forth wobble for the primarily the second brace that i added is a cross brace that needs to be attached just about the top of the frame <clears throat> and it needs to go down to at least halfway a four foot piece here if you adjust it just right will almost reach completely to the floor this is the most important brace this is what keeps the, the easel from going back and forth so you don't have that issue to deal with anymore That's a huge difference. This is no longer wobbling back and forth. There still is some vibration to it. Um, I've only added one support that holds the top. You could put in two. That would take care of a little bit. That would take care of a lot more of what's going on but the X brace that's down on the bottom is by far the most important brace that I found uh, for my needs learning how to paint. BRI just sends these two small screws that you can put through that go into the bottom of the canvas. This is only to keep the canvas from coming out. That would be the top leg as well. The canvas sets in on the frame so it won't go back but if, unless they're screwed in or attached down. I found the screws to be a pain in the butt. I also found that if I need to bring this up two inches, I have got to find something that goes underneath the legs two inches. Once you've added the weight to the bottom of it, raising, pulling those pins and getting the whole thing adjusted is just a horrible pain in the I had a better idea. I took a piece of one by two oak. I cut it to where it would fit in between the rails, leaving a wing to hold the outside of the canvas. Basically, I've recreated the bottom leg. I now have full adjustment to where I don't have to raise the entire stand. I can just simply loosen my carriage bolt and choose the height that I want my canvas to be and then simply tighten it back up. Now, you're going to need something to hold the bottom of the canvas in place. You could install some screws if you wanted to. What I did was just take some regular sheetrock nails and I drilled a hole through here was the exact size of the nail, drove it through and put a small bend to it, and then I cut them off, leaving about a quarter of an inch sticking up at an angle that I can now drive the canvas down onto those nails. This is a 24 by 18 canvas. BRI did not use a carriage bolt in there. This is a carriage bolt. They just used a round bolt that went through. So you never could get this quite as tight as you wanted to because this portion of it would start to spin. If you pick up a carriage bolt, you're gonna to have to make some minor adjustments inside to get that square piece to go through there. You can lay it flat on the ground, use a hammer and a screwdriver. Don't break your thumbs or fingers until you can get it to set in there, but keep it to where it locks in place. That way you don't have to use a wrench on the outside while you're hand tightening from the back. That just didn't make any sense to me at all. I forgot to mention that those were four foot links, pre-cut four foot links that you can purchase right off the shelf. You won't have to do any cutting. Happy trails, happy painting. Thank you for watching.